All right, what's up, you guys? This is a very special vlog today because we have the fabulous Aisha Tyler here with us. Um, now, Aisha, people know you from tons of different things. Archer, uh, Friends, Ghost Whisper, her amazing, hugely popular podcast, Girl on Guy, and obviously, Every Day on the Talk on CBS. Thank you. But one of your most unique roles you played is the one that you had on the Obama campaign recently. Like, what Can you tell me a little bit about your experience was like... Yeah, yeah, you know, I was a volunteer during the last campaign um, on a kind of in a limited way, and so I really wanted to get more involved this time, and, and I think also the fact that I have, like, a lot going on, you know, kind of my, my profile was a little higher, so I was a little bit more valuable to the campaign this time, so I was an official campaign surrogate, and I went to five battleground states this year, I would have done more if I had had more free time, but um, it was incredible, you know, I spoke... To, I spoke to volunteers, I spoke to voters, I did voter registration, I did voter empowerment. Um, I did uh, specifically a lot of get out the vote stuff after registration periods were over. And the main thing for me was interacting, I think, with other volunteers. You know, I said to a lot of people, you know, I think people look at celebrities and they go like, well, why do I care what they think about politics or why do I care about their opinion? Right. What makes them special? Well, you know, we're not special. I'm not special. I'm just a volunteer. I'm just an American and a patriot and a volunteer like the rest of the volunteers that were volunteering for the campaign. And that was really how I felt, and that was really how I saw it. And I was just there to be a part of that that effort and, and kind of hopefully capitalize on that energy and get people excited. But they excited me about the campaign as much as I, I hope that I gave them some excitement and some motivation. So. Totally. That's so awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's such a, obviously, a groundbreaking presidency. And mm -hmm. the election was, I feel like this one in particular, even maybe a little more so, but in a different way, is even, like, one of the most pivotal elections no, much of, more our, of our generation, of our lifetime. It was much more important. I said to people quite a bit, I know for so many people that the last election kind of generated so much enthusiasm, and it felt like a really singular moment in our in our cultural and our political history. You know, obviously the first black president, you know, such a young president, such an energizing president, that for, for a lot of people it was the first time they'd ever even gotten involved with politics. Yeah. But I argued repeatedly during this campaign that this one was a more important election because it was like we were peeking around the corner with the with the last election. This was really about of the character of this country and what kind of a country we want to be and whether we were going to commit to the path we'd set ourselves on. And I think, you know, it, it wasn't just about race, it was about about culture. Are we a country that, you know, wants everybody to have a leg up and everybody to be able to have an opportunity to improve their lives and the lives of their children? Or were we going to be the kind of country that just kept betting on the same, you know, the same policies and the same approach that had put us where we were now. And, you know, I just, for me, I come from a working class family. My dad grew up in Pittsburgh. His dad died when he was very young. He was raised by a single mom. He's in eighth grade education. He worked very hard when I was a kid. He had, sometimes he had two jobs. Sometimes he had no job. I had a period in my life where we had nowhere to live. And for me to have everything I have now, the opportunities I've had, the luck, the good fortune I've had, of course I've worked hard, but so much of it comes from the fact that I live in a country where anything is possible. And the thing I said every day when I was speaking to people, you know, in churches or in, in campaign centers or on the street or at rallies was, you know, a quote from the Bible that I learned from comic books when I was a kid, which is that to whom much is given, much is required. And I feel so fortunate to have what I have. And for me not to give back, for me not to volunteer, for me not to take an active role in speaking up for what I believe in, to me was just irresponsible. So it was, this election I think I really feel like as a nation, and it was definitive, he won, he won the popular vote, he won the electoral vote, I don't think anybody can say that he didn't win this election definitively, I think it really says something about the direction that we're going in, and who we are as a culture, that we want to have a nation of equality, and we want to totally. place, you know, the fact that there was, a mar you know, four marriage equality votes, yeah. and marriage equality won in all four states, we are really on a, a great path to greater equality, and you know, there's a phrase and in it sets a tone, you it know, does. for like the rest of the country where we're headed, you know, like for the first time, you for know, the we, first we made time. This, like these, these measures passed, you know, yeah. the first time a popular vote went in favor of marriage equality. Well, usually when that ballot, when that ballot measure is on saying that marriage is between a man and a woman, it always wins. This is the first time it hasn't won. I mean, yeah. that was, I think, the most unique of all of the votes. But, you know, you think about, you know, the preambles of the Constitution and it talks about a more perfect union. You know, we've been trying to perfect this union for a long time. There was a period where where I could, uh, you know, where I wouldn't have been able to vote because I was a woman and a period where I wouldn't have been able to vote because I was black. And, you know, there was a period where my husband and I couldn't got, have gotten married because we're different, you know, we're he's white and I'm black. We're continually trying to perfect this union. Yeah. And to me, we took a huge step forward in, in, in the perfection of, of the American Union. So I'm really proud of this election. I like that. That's really cool. Um, 
So you look look forward in the future. Fifty years from now, you're sitting in your rocking chair. I hope so. Playing playing Halo my, 38 my, in my jetpack <laughs> in my jetpack yeah, rocking chair. Exactly. Yes. Um, you look back on this election, your involvement. What's your favorite memory? My favorite memory from this election. Oh wow, that's a good question. Well, I have two, I think. One was going to the voting center in Akron, Ohio, and just walking down the line. I wasn't really campaigning for the president. I was just myself, just talking to people, encouraging them to stay in line, encouraging them to, you know, it was freezing cold. People were waiting in these huge lines to vote. And just, you know, people fought and died in this country for the right to vote. You know what I mean? And so... For people to be standing there in the cold and realizing what a precious gift that is and how how rights have to be exercised to remain vigorous, that was really wonderful. And I just talked to people, took pictures, and that was really like a like a lovely day. And yeah. um, and then I think selfishly probably election night because yeah, what'd you do? Election I night? flew to Chicago. I didn't yeah. get to go last time, so I flew. I I was here. I did a, an a, a episode of the talk. I rushed into the car. Barely made it to the airport. Going through the line, everything that could have gone wrong did go wrong. Um, my bag had water in it, which I'd forgotten. <laughs> I got beeped three times going through the metal detector. I had to have a, a like a, a hand search, and then when my bag got beeped, I had to go through the security again. I barely made my flight, and then on the plane, like with the Wi-Fi, like trying to see what the results were, and landing and racing to uh, OFA headquarters. And just hearing the cheers and the screaming of all these people and being on the floor with them and, and seeing all the volunteers, really seeing the volunteers. Who cares about celebrities? Who cares about politicians? Seeing the volunteers who you know have been sleeping on people's floors for months, giving their time for free, baking food for other people, walking the streets in the rain, in the cold, in the blazing heat if they were in Nevada. Those people, their reward, you know, those college students, those those retired senior citizens who had given up all their time for this, to see them hugging each other and crying on that floor when the president and he won. It was just the most amazing thing I've ever seen, you know. And this, there was a guy next to me about five feet away who had this sign um, that said, we have overcome. And, uh, and you know, he was like this old, this older Jewish guy, you know, just like waving the sign around. Yeah. He was so happy. And, um, you know, we have, we've haven't overcome racism in this country. Obviously, we have a long way to go, but we we're, we are constantly making continual steps forward, and I'm I'm really proud of that. That's so cool. That's such an awesome <laughs> memory. I mean, you it's know, good one. That. It's I fun. mean, yeah, I know that that moment was like. I mean, I was just in my apartment, and you could hear the very moment where you know we knew, even like in the streets, you could just hear you know applause yeah. and stuff, and it's yeah. just like. You're so right. It's just such a feeling of moving forward, yeah. and that's what this is all about. Yeah, you know? so, absolutely. Aisha Tyler, you're such a cool lady. <laughs> oh, thank you thank so much. You. And just like on a pleasure. personal level, you're just like I look up to you so much, oh, and and you. I admire you so much. So thank, thank you. you for doing this. Super sweet. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, guys. See you later. <laughs>